Hi everybody. So I was driving around yesterday and I went up to Arnold and I came home the back way and as I came through I went by what used to be called the the Golden Spur, the Silver Spur. They're outside of Mountain Ranch and it used to be a store and a gas station and they had a, a lovely built-in pool and barbecue area. But I remember taking Javin and the kids there for someone's birthday party and it was just a fun, fun place. And I drove by and there's nothing left but the sign now. The Butte Fire took it all out. And it reminded me of how much loss has occurred over the past years since the Butte Fire. The Butte Fire changed a lot of things for a lot of us. And then a year later, we had the Point Fire where our very own pastor and his wife lost their home and others in town lost things. And we've had a lot of people we care about and love pass on. My mom died in January. Um, another good friend of ours passed during quarantine. Our previous pastor, John, is in the fight of his life. I've had my own personal losses within our family as well and um, it's been hard. There's a lot of loss and you kind of want things to go back to normal, whatever normal was. And this quarantine and the, the coronavirus and all of this that's going on has really caused a lot of loss and heartache as well. Um, Mike was working with Bart Rush yesterday, John's brother, and he talked about the stages of grief. For those of you who are familiar with them, um, Kubler-Ross did this study. And so we start out in denial, then we go to anger, depression, um, what's the next one? It's again, refusal to believe it and then move on. Anyways, and he was saying, and it's true, that we are seeing these, these stages of grief in our society today as people are dealing with the COVID virus. Um, there's denial, there's anger, there's acceptance, there's all these different stages because everyone goes through stages at a different point. So when, number one, I just wanna say, when you run into somebody who is not responding the same way you are, remember that they're in a different stage. Now, how does this all lead me to the scripture I'm sharing today? I'm not sure, but it did. God has been putting this scripture on my heart along a lot lately too. And it just caused me to think that in the midst of all of this upheaval and change and sadness and grief, here's what God tells us to do. This is in Romans 12. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you, because of course we know we couldn't do it without him, right? Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. There's a lot there. Take everything we do, our everyday life, sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. So in these days of maybe getting up, making breakfast, taking care of the kids, doing some laundry, doing some yard work, doing some TV watching, some Netflix binging, whatever it is we're doing to get <clears throat> through our days, we need to take these things and offer them up to God, to give our everyday lives as an offering, not our big glorious deeds, not our amazingness, because we aren't any of those things without him. He asks us to give him our everyday life. And then we're told to please embrace what God has given us. Embrace it. Thank him. Sorry for all the noise. All the Mario trucks just went by. It's a busy morning, I guess, here. Let's pray. Lord, help us take every thought captive to you. Help us just realize that the everyday small things we do are actually big things when we do them for you. Please give us peace, give us joy, and give us grace. In Jesus' name, amen.